Welcome back. Continuing on with our study of text mining or text analytics, we'll take a look at sentiment analysis in this section. Okay, what do we mean by sentiment analysis? Well, when you're talking about text mining, you're really talking about highly unstructured data. It's just textual data, so it could be in the form of blogs, could be in the form of uh, tweets, uh, could be uh, you know just email messages or it could be uh, customer complaints being posted on a website any of these things unstructured or even student evaluations of uh, professors all of these are uh, text mining uh, scenarios in which we've got a lot of unstructured text and we need to extract some intelligence out of that in our earlier discussions we've looked at how uh, we could do uh, word analysis in terms of the frequency of word usage and how we could analyze that to uh, find similarities and differences between different people who author these uh, texts. Today what we are going to do is to take a look at text mining from the point of view of sentiment analysis which is to look at units of text and see broadly whether it expresses a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment. Now how might this be useful? So again, uh, going back to something that I had mentioned earlier, suppose we have uh, uh, emails, customer support emails, that is uh, customers sending emails to companies about some issues, customer care documents, right? So we can expect that companies receive uh, hundreds of thousands of these documents. But of course, it's very difficult for companies to try and read each of these documents and then figure out which are the ones that are important for them to respond to. Okay. Now through sentiment analysis, if it were possible for them to look at each of these documents and identify those which say are fairly negative, right? which means that the customer has some serious concerns and it's a good idea for the company to, to understand those concerns and uh, redress the customer concerns and address the issues that the customer is pointing out. Right? So obviously if the company doesn't do this, then they will lose the customer or uh, it might even balloon up from there. The, you know, the customer may, may spend, uh, send poor word of mouth regarding the company. Okay? So because of all of this, it becomes uh, important for uh, companies to be able to look at a, a sea of documents and identify which are the ones that are important for the company to take up or that are urgent for the company to take up. So sentiment analysis might help a lot in such a kind of a scenario. Okay, so what we're going to do today is to look at techniques for doing sentiment analysis with R. As I've already pointed out, uh, there is another package called TM or text mining, which has several text mining capabilities. Uh, but as of now, it doesn't have a facility for sentiment analysis, at least as of, uh, uh, let's say a week ago when I looked for it, it doesn't have sentiment analysis. So we are going to be using uh, our tidy text package to do sentiment analysis. So let's move on. As usual, we'll get ready and uh, we need to load the tidy text package and uh, the string R package as well as the tidy verse package. Because after all, we are doing everything with uh, tidy data. We already saw uh, earlier what we mean by tidy data and uh, we need uh, you know, the deep liar and all other capabilities that come with tidyverse, right? So we are doing tidy text mining, so we need that as well. And we, of course, need some documents in order to do sentiment analysis on. And we've already introduced in the previous segment the uh, Jane Austen R package, which can allow us to get the complete text of all the works of Jane Austen. Of course, we are just using this as a way to get a large amount of text. If we can get large amounts of text through any other means, we could use that and then continue our analysis. So for example, I already showed you how to download tweets from Twitter. So that could be our uh, source of uh, text for analysis. Or uh, if you have some way of getting hold of um, uh, blog posts at a particular location, you could do that, right? Or of course, like I mentioned earlier, course evaluation data, if that's available, you can get hold of that and then do sentiment analysis, right? So we are using Jane Austen R just as a source of large amounts of text for us to analyze. Of course, the methods we are studying here apply not just to 
textual documents got from this particular source, but it can be applied in general to any kind of text, large amounts of text that you have. And uh, the, first of all, we need to understand the notion of uh, how exactly sentiment analysis is performed. Now, sentiment analysis is performed typically uh, by associating a sentiment with every word, right? Of course, many words are neutral. You know, suppose, for example, you say uh, bed, that probably has a neutral sentiment, or book, or something like that. So these might be a uh, table, chair. These may have neutral sentiments. On the other hand, there are other words like good, excellent, sad, um, uh, you know, lonely, uh, worried, angry, right? These are words that express certain sentiments, right? Some of them are positive, some of them are negative, and so on. Okay, so the basic idea in sentiment analysis is to take chunks of text and try to identify the overall sentiment in a given chunk. Okay, so for example, suppose we've got a book, right, a complete book and we've got the, uh, we've got the book broken up into, let's say, lines. Okay, so now what we might want to do is to take uh, combine the book into, let's say, chunks of 100 lines. And then overall, for those 100 lines, by looking at the words in those 100 lines, we'll be able to identify what is the overall sentiment of that chunk of text. Okay, And then, of course, we do that for the entire text. And therefore, we'll get an idea of, uh, for each chunk of 100 lines, how is the overall sentiment of the book changing, overall sentiment of the document changing, right? So that's one way to look at it. Now, in the case of the email examples that I had given earlier, the customer service stuff, right? So there you could look at each customer service request or customer service message as our analysis. And then for that whole doc uh, document or for that whole message, we could say, what's the overall sentiment of this particular message? Okay. Now, in order to take a chunk of text, and get the overall sentiment for a chunk of text, what we are going to do is to break up the chunk of text into individual words and then simply use some kind of mechanism to associate a sentiment with the each word. Okay, So that way, when you have a chunk of text, you can simply aggregate the sentiments from the individual words and get a sense of the overall sentiment. Okay, So that's the overall approach that we are going to be using here. And of course, the, the, the all of this clearly depends upon us being able to associate sentiments with words. Okay, and that is where the sentiments table or data frame in uh, the package tidyverse comes into play. Okay, in the tidy text package, I'm sorry, that comes into play, right? So let's take a look. Suppose you type, once you've loaded tidy text, library tidy text, looking at sentiments gives you this. Okay, so clearly you can see that it's a table. It has 23,165 words. And you can see there's a column called word. And for every column, you've got a sentiment and you've got a lexicon. Okay, now uh, the lexicon is basically this sentiment table has sentiments available from three different sources. Each source we call as a lexicon. Lexicon broadly means dictionary, but you know anything to do uh, anything, any collection to do with words is called a lexicon. Okay, so there are three different sources which define our sentiments, and uh, all of these three sources are found in this sentiments table. Okay, of course, initially you're seeing all the sentiments from the NRC lexicon. It's just a name of the lexicon. It's called NRC. Okay, now clearly from this you can see that NRC doesn't simply say a word is a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment. Instead, it classifies the word in terms of emotions, right? So for example, the word Abacus has a trust kind of a sentiment. The word Abandon has got two sentiments associated with it, that of being fear and also negative and sadness, right? Uh, so you've got that. And of course, they've got all the different forms of the word Abandon, Abandon, Abandoned, Abandonment, all of these. Okay, so clearly in the NRC a lexicon, a particular word may be associated with many sentiments. Okay, uh, but there are different 
lexicons, as I said, there are three different lexicons. And uh, NRC is the lexicon that classifies words in terms of uh, the, the in this way. But the other two lexicons, which we will see shortly, they don't do this. Instead, they simply assign uh, one of the lexicons assigns a score, right? So uh, it'll assign a score like if it's minus five, it's a strongly negative sentiment. On the other hand, if it's plus five, it's a strongly positive sentiment. Close to zero would be a neutral sentiment. Okay, so another sentiment, another lexicon takes a different approach to classifying the sentiments. And a third uh, lexicon simply classifies every word as being either positive or negative in terms of sentiment. Okay, so in this sentiment table, we have sentiment data from three different lexicons. And what we'll see in this particular uh, segment today is how to use these lexicons to do sentiment analysis. Okay, so if you type unique sentiment dollar lexicon, you'll see that there are three different lexicons used here. The NRC, which is the first lexicon that you're seeing here. There's another lexicon called Bing and a third lexicon called AFIN. Okay, so these are just the names of the lexicons, the names of the sources of these sentiment classifications. Okay, so let's take a look broadly at how these three lexicons uh, approach the issue of sentiment. So if I said get sentiments, get underscore sentiments AFIN. Okay, now this get underscore sentiments is a function in the tidy text package. So if I said get sent underscore sentiments AFIN, it's going to give us all the sentiments in the AFIN lexicon. And you see here, this is how AFIN does it. So AFIN, as you can see here, associates a number with each word. Negative numbers indicate negative, uh, lex uh, negative uh, sentiments. Positive numbers indicate positive sentiments. And the magnitude of the number tells us how negative or how positive the word is in terms of sentiment. On the other hand, Bing just uh, classifies every word as either negative or positive. Okay, now remember, neutral doesn't figure in, in this picture because if something is of neutral sentiment, it simply doesn't even figure in the lexicon, right? Clearly, the lexicon is uh, pretty small, right, compared to the total number of words that are... So the whole lexicon consists of only 23,165 words, okay? So only words which are associated with any sentiments figure in the lexicon, okay? So Bing simply classifies everything as positive or negative, AFIN actually associates a number so that it takes into account the degree of positiveness or negativement. And NRC, we've already seen that uh, it takes a different approach. Instead of giving numbers or positive, negative, it associates a more descriptive sentiment with each word. Okay, so what we are now going to do is to see how we can use these three uh, lexicons to perform sentiment analysis. Okay, so obviously our first step is to get hold of some text in order to perform sentiment analysis. So we get hold of Jane Austen books and from, you know, based on what we have done in the previous segment, uh, we first clean it up, right? That is what we are doing is uh, for every book, right? After all, this uh, uh, tidy books, uh, rather this Austen books will return us data from all the books of by Jane Austen. And what we want to do is for for every book, we want to have uh, the row number for each of the lines in the book, which is the line number. And we also want to associate a chapter number. And in the previous uh, week, I had explained to you exactly how this works in terms of adding a chapter number. Okay, so we did that. And then, of course, we are doing ungroup because group by, uh, grouped it by book, but we never used any summarize function and therefore the grouping still remains, so we do ungroup, okay? <clears throat> and then after that, we, uh, so what this is going to do is for every line in, uh, in Austin books, it's going to give a line number and it's going to give a chapter number based on the book in which they appear, okay? And then once we do all of that, we can then do unnest tokens to break up the whole thing into individual words. Okay, so you've got this stuff and this is what happens. So you've got sense and sensibility, line number one, chapter number zero, the first word is sense, uh, and so on. Okay, obviously, clearly you can see that where the chapter is zero, the, all that stuff is coming from uh, the title page, 
of the book and then as you keep going down you start seeing the the text from the first chapter and the second chapter and so on right so this part about what we did i had explained in detail in the previous week so if you need to clarify this uh, just jump over to the videos from the previous week and take a look okay so let's just see how we might use uh, the lexicon so for example we saw that uh, the nrc lexicon classifies words uh, the sentiments in a more uh, specific way by associating different words with the with uh, different sentiment indicators of words with each word so i'm seeing nrc joy is get sentiments nrc right so that will get all the sentiment definitions from the nrc lexicon okay and then we want to find let's say only the joy words used in uh, in something so we are filtering it and saying okay get me only those uh, records or rows in which the corresponding sentiment is joy so we got that okay so now nrc joy contains all the joy words all the words from the nrc sentiment uh, lexicon uh, that uh, it classifies as being words expressing the sentiment of joy okay so now it's a simple matter for us to take our tidy books and simply identify all the joy words so here we're taking tidy books and getting the rows associated with the book emma which is one of jane austen's books and then we can simply say inner join nrc joy okay so of course the column uh, as we saw from before the word column in uh, in uh, sentiment is called word and of course in our book when we created tidy books we also call the column as word okay so it's an easy thing to join our uh, book broken up into words with the uh, with the joy words that we have just created here okay so what this will do is uh, effectively it will create for us a table in which we've got every single word of our uh, document that we are analyzing which in this particular case is the book emma right and alongside every word we also have uh, its sentiment right uh, so uh, if effectively that's the the sentiment uh, words is representing joy have been joined okay so then we can count uh, the words and we can see which are all the joy words that jane austen has used in the book emma okay so you can see here and we of course sorted it so we can see that these are all the many some of the joy words that have been used and uh, good is the joy word that occurs most frequently in the book emma uh, and young is the next most frequent and so on and so on okay that's just an example of how you could take uh, of course instead of doing inner join we could have also just done a semi join right just to retain only those words which appear in the uh, in nrc joy we could have done that that would have been probably a little more effective efficient okay so just showing you how we can use the lexicon sentiment uh, information along with our tidied up data to do some kinds of analysis okay so now let's do some more detailed analysis first what we are going to do is we are going to take multiple books by jane austen all the books by jane austen and then we are going to analyze each of the books by using one of the three lexicons that we have okay so multiple books single lexicon which means for each book we'll be able to see how the sentiment is flowing in the book okay as i had said earlier i'm going to break the book up into uh, chunks of 100 lines okay and for every chunk of 100 lines we are going to find out the net sentiment right and then we can see how uh, over the book how the book begins in terms of sentiment and how the sentiment changes as the book flows that's what we are going to do once we finish that we will then move on to looking at a single book analyzed through multiple lexicons we'll do all of these things